Hey everyone, welcome back. So today is Friday. We're going to get into the news. There's a lot of stuff going on. BitFarms obviously provided their uh, production updates for June, which is actually pretty good. Uh, so there's some good news there, obviously. But we'll get into the de details on that. We'll also get into the details on FTX bailing out again uh, BlockFi and possibly buying them for $240 million possibly at the high end. But we'll get into that and we'll also take a look at uh, a comment that uh, Sam Bankman Freed uh, said about possibly looking to purchase miners. So we'll get into all that, but as always, not financial advice. You guys know the drill. I'm invested in following coins and companies, and I did do a little shopping today. I did buy, I tweeted it, I bought 50 more shares of uh, Rivian, 250 shares, I believe it was, of Bitfarms, and 100 more shares of CleanSpark, if my memory serves me correct, from today, this morning. So we got that going on at least. Um, We'll see where the market takes us. But right now, Bitcoin is obviously at uh, 19,305. We had a huge climb up here yesterday, um, right before, I think, well, let me see, the market usually closes on uh, right around 1,700 hours. No, not 17, 1,900 hours, around 7 o'clock. So up to that point, a couple hours before that, the price of Bitcoin was, I mean, really rocketing up. We were up almost $1,000 in just over 15 minutes at one point. So we had a huge increase in the price, and I think that was based on the end of the month options expiry. And people were just trying to uh, maybe lose a little bit less, maybe covering a little bit, we'll see. Um, but obviously after that, we fell, fell back down a little bit to our support line here, about 19,500 or so. And we've been bouncing off of it here for the past oh, 12, 14 hours or so. Uh, we've tried to get above it a couple of times, but we're having obviously not very good luck at it. So we'll see how that plays out going forward. Right now, I'm still looking for any kind of change on the RSI and the price of Bitcoin to see if we may have a trend reversal where it's becoming more bullish instead of bearish. Right now, we're still looking a little bit bearish. But right now, we're kind of looking neutral here on the RSI and the price of Bitcoin. If we look here, we are at 19,291. Last time we were around here, we were a little bit lower than that. So we have a little bit of an increase in price and the RSI being flat. So we'll, we'll see how it goes over the weekend, see how that plays out. Obviously, the market's going to be closed on Monday, and the Canadian market was, was closed today. So we'll obviously see how the miners react um, come Tuesday. But that's Bitcoin, Ethereum, same thing. You can see a big pump here before the month close. And then we've obviously been doing the same thing, bouncing up and down a little bit here. Uh, RSI is a little bit higher on Ethereum. Take a look at the miners. The miners did actually pretty good today for the most part. Most of them were up on the day. There were a couple that were just down. But Sphere 3D was up 2.9% to $0.54, cents, down a little bit in the after hours to $0.52. Cents. Argo was flat at $0.38. Cents. Bit Digital was up 3.82% to $1.36, down a little bit in the after hours to $1.35. Bit Farms was down 1.79% to $1.10, up a little bit in the after hours to $1.15. Clean Spark was up 0.77 to $3.95, and they are down a little bit in the after hours to $3.94. Uh, Core Scientific was up 1.34% to $1.51, down a little bit in the after hours to $1.50. Digihost was up 0.98% to $1.03, flat in the after hours. DMG was down 3.49% to $0.18. Cents. High Blockchain was up 4%. To three dollars and eleven, up a little bit more in the after hours, another six percent in the after hours to three dollars and thirty cents. Hut eight was up three point seven six percent to a dollar thirty eight, another two point nine percent up in the after hours to a dollar forty two. Iris Energy was up seven point four six percent to three dollars and sixty cents, flat in the after hours. Luxfolio was wow down twenty point three one percent to ten cents. Marathon was up three point seven five percent to five dollars and fifty four, down a little bit in the after hours to five fifty three. Mawson was up $5.50 to $1.50. Riot was up 1.19% to $4.24, up a little bit in the after hours to $4.34. And Stronghold finally was down 1.2% today to $1.64, up a little bit in the after hours to $1.70. So for the most part, the miners were up, some were down a little bit, but it wasn't too bad. So let's get into the news here on the that we got going on. So Voyeur, Voyeur Digital temporarily suspends all trading withdrawals and deposits. Um, so shares of the troubled digital broker plunged more than 26% of U.S. trading on Friday. This is obviously not good news. And here's what we got from it. So crypto broker Voyager Digital is temporarily suspending all trading, deposits, withdrawals, and loyalty rewards. The company announced Friday 
even the Voyager issued debit card will stop working for owners now. So if you had coins in Voyager Digital and those were being you know, converted automatically into USD and you're paying for that, you're kind of out of luck right now on that. Um, and you can't even take your coins or whatever you had in there out of the exchange now. So you might be in trouble right now. So um, obviously that's not good news. Um, and I've said this before, get your coins off of exchanges, off of these platforms, not your keys, not your coins, right? You guys know the drill here. Um, I've taken pretty much all my Bitcoin out of co uh, Coinbase because right now everything that we're seeing, you just, you just don't know. And the other good thing about taking your coins off is that they can't um, loan them out to somebody else, right? So leverage comes way, way down when you do that. And if everybody does it, obviously there's not going to be any leverage in the market. Also, uh, continuing on here, so this was a tremendously difficult decision, but we believe it is the right one given current market conditions, said uh, Stefan uh, El Elrek, CEO of Voyager, in a statement. The, this decision gives us additional time to continue exploring strategic alternatives with various interested parties while preserving the value of Voyager platform we have built together. We will provide additional information at the appropriate time. So obviously Voyager disclosed that you know it had significant exposure to Three Arrows Capital, and then Voyager claims that 3AC has failed to make, obviously, required payments on its loans of 15,250 BTC, worth about $294 million, and $350 million of USDC. Voyager said it is actively pursuing all available remedies for the recovery from 3AC, including through a court order liquidation process in the British Virgin Islands. Who knows how that's going to play out, but obviously they are hurting right now. And then Voyager had earlier received a cash USDC loan of $200 million and a revolving credit facility of for 15,000 bitcoins, $294 million from a quantitative, quantitative trading firm Almeida Research, which is owned by FTX CEO Sam Bankman-Fried, to safeguard Voyager's customers' assets. So Sam is obviously bailing out pretty much anybody he can for the most part, or anybody that he thinks was worth bailing out. So we know that he's bailing them out, bailing, bailing out BlockFi as well. So he's kind of like the JP Morgan Chase of the crypto industry or something like that, if you want to compare it to that. And I'll have to do some more research on Sam just to kind of understand his background a little bit more. But definitely an interesting fellow and somebody that is doing a lot of good things for the crypto space. So uh, my hat's off to him and FTX for doing that. And then obviously here's the next story from... FTX again. So crypto billionaire Sam Bankman-Fried inks BlockFi deal, eyes distressed, miners next. So this is very interesting here. And here's what we got. So Sam Bankman-Fried, the co-founder of crypto exchange FTX, who just signed a deal with BlockFi Inc., said he's open to exploring acquisitions in the battered crypto mining industry. I mean, right now, if we look at the miners, a lot of them are way undervalued. Even most of them are uh, their current... Uh, market cap is below what they have in assets as far as infrastructure, miners, and possibly even Bitcoin that they are holding right now. So it would be, you know, easy pickings for him to pick one of the ones that is most distressed right now because they're all really distressed right now. Uh, way undervalued in my opinion. Continuing on here. So the move comes at a time when Bitcoin mining companies are facing growing distress. The crypto billionaire is considering acquiring troubled crypto firms to stem potential credit contagion amid the prolonged bear market, right? We've obviously seen, seen from BitFarms provide to us that they had to sell Bitcoin in order to cover their uh, BTC-backed loans. So here's a quote. When we think about the mining industry, they do play a little bit of a role in the possible contagion spread, uh, which is accurate, to the extent that there are miners that were collateralizing uh, borrows with their mining rigs. So we have that. We have some companies that were obviously collateralizing their mining rigs and getting loans against them. Uh, I have to look into which ones they were. I think there were a couple of them that did it. Uh, and then that we've obviously had some that had loans backed by their BTCs. So that's also a contingent part of it as well. Um, also, a quote from Bank Bankman, there might come along a real, a really compelling opportunity for us. I definitely don't want to discount that possibility. So they are absolutely looking to possibly, uh, you know, buy up one of the miners or Heck, they could probably buy up a couple of miners. Uh, Bankman-Fried has acted as a lender of last resort during the recent crypto meltdown with his trading firm, Almeida Research. I can I look into some more on Almeida also. And providing credit lines to Voyager Digital, he stopped short when it came to Celsius Network, turning down a bailout request by the lender. 
according to people familiar with the story. And while the crypto mining wouldn't fit into FTX's core strategy, Bankman uh, Freed has been looking into whether there are underwater miners that could have some balance sheet impact on the crypto lending firms, he said on Friday. His exchange signed an agreement in, to inject capital into BlockFi with an option to purchase the crypto lender for as much as $240 million. And that is actually the top price that they would pay for it. Um, they also, I think, added another uh, line of credit to them to, for a total of $400 million, and the top price would be that they would pay for it would be $240 million based on... Uh, metrics that improvement metrics i guess you could say they would pay that but obviously they could pay less depending if they don't improve uh whatever those uh, stipulations were as a result merger and acquisition opportunities could arise marathon digital holdings inc's chief executive officer fred thiel said in, in april that his company was open to possibility of a sale at the right at the right price we also know that obviously marathon is having a lot of problems getting their miners installed getting them operational they're having uh, problems with the power plant in uh, Hardin, Montana. They are at 600 petahash right now. They have a lot of miners that are not mining right now. They're going to be, uh, well, they're in trouble right now, I think. Um, depending if they have any loans, those loans obviously pay interest on those. Uh, that's going to be tough. We'll have to see what they provide as far as their production updates for June and then their quarterly results are going to be really telling for Q2. So stick around for that. If you're interested in hearing that, we'll definitely cover it. Um, you know, subs subscribe helps me out. So that is it for what we have here on this. So this is really interesting, I think. And we'll see if FTX and uh, Fred, what's his name, uh, Bankman, Freed, buys anything going forward. But obviously, the news with Voyager Digital is obviously disconcerting, especially if you have coins there uh, and you're using the debit card possibly you might be in trouble like i said folks get your coins off the exchanges get them into a hardware wallet get them out of there at least until things improve a little bit uh, right now is just a tough time right now you just don't know who's going to fall next uh, so be careful obviously and then finally we got to obviously bit farms provides june 2022 production and mining operation update so we'll get into the numbers here we also have some details on their operations and growth which is kind of good to see as well and they actually had a pretty good uh, month for mining. And we'll get into all the details here. But here's a quote uh, from them. So the bunker is nearing completion of phase two, and it will be our largest active site with 36 megawatts, powering approximately 913 petahash per second. It's, uh, this is their chief mining officer at Bitfarms. Binary deployments at the bunker drove 6% increase in our sequential month-over-month -month hash rate to 3.6 exahash per second. Production averaged 14 BTC for the month and is currently clocked at 14.6 BTC per day, which is pretty good. They have been growing consistently here in the last several months, and that is exactly what we want to see. And that is, for full disclosure, why I'm kind of investing in them. Uh, I think they're going to be doing pretty good. Uh, do your own research, as always. Importantly, with the minor installations continuing, we expect to exceed our Q2 2022 target of 4 exahash within the next 2 to 3 weeks. So this is actually really good. So... Uh, they're off a little bit, obviously, uh, from that to exceed our Q2 target, Q2, I mean, we're in Q2 right now, unless they're talking about, unless they do quarterly reporting differently. Some companies do Q1 is like between March, April through June, and some have Q4 as January through March. So I'm going by Q2 as the quarter that we just basically finished up here. So they're a little bit behind, but they are getting there within two to three weeks. Uh, this growth, coupled with the recent declines in the overall hash rate of network from a 30-day rolling average of about 222 exahash to 212 exahash, signals we are well positioned to gain market share and increase our daily mined Bitcoins in July, which is true. We've obviously seen the hash rate come back down, but it is kind of going back up. I just checked it um, today, and it does seem to be picking back up, so it looks like miners are getting installed. In June, we completed the building structure for the first 50-megawatt warehouse in Rio Cuarto, Argentina, and are nearing completion of its roof and floor. Construction is also progressing smoothly on the construction of the high-voltage 132-kilovolt transmission line that will feed the site. With construction on schedule, we continue to expect production to commence at the first warehouse in Q4 of 2022, and our plan remains to complete the second 50-megawatt facility in Q1 in 2023. So they're absolutely growing, which is good as well. Mining production, 3.6 exahash online as of June 30th. Uh, 420 new BTC mined during June 2022, up 58 from June of last year. 
14 BTC mined daily on average in June, equivalent to about 280,000 per day and approximately 8 million for the month based on the BTC price of 20,000. I have the price a little bit lower uh, for June, but not much lower. It's only a couple hundred dollars lower. So we're pretty close to that. 3,144 BTC in custody on June 30th, representing a total value of approximately 63 million based on BTC price of 20,000. BTC held in custody on June 30th, 2022, reflects the sale of 3,352 BTC during June. We've obviously covered this, where I believe that they were getting margin called with um, Galaxy Digital. With that loan, they had to obviously sell more BTC to cover it, and they did. Let's see what else do we have here. Uh, so paying down the company's debt. So the comp paying down the company's 100 million BTC backed loan facility to 38 million. That's a good thing. Obviously, the price of Bitcoin has fell substantially here since the beginning of the year. So they're reducing the outstanding principal by 62 million and freezing up 27 million of BTC that was otherwise collateralizing the loan above the principal repayment, reducing interest expense by 7 million on the annualized basis. So that's also a good thing. And amending the BTC backed loan that was to mature in June 30th, extending the maturity by three months for the maximum of 40 million, of which 38 million is currently outstanding at an interest rate of 11.25%. So obviously, you want to get that paid down. And selling 3,352 BTC during the month for total proceeds of 69 million, a portion of which was used to pay down the BTC backed facility. And they obviously close 37 million new equipment finance equipment with NYDIG. So that's good as well. So let's get into the numbers I have for them, and we'll call it a day, and then we'll see what happens this weekend. Okay, so BitFarm is obviously 202 million shares outstanding. Stock price right now is $1.10. Market cap is 222 million. Uh, institutions has gone up a little bit. We'll get into that down below, but right now it's at 15.96. 102 institutions are in it, and we have a stock price of a high of in the last 52 weeks of $9.36, a low of $1.07, which was just within the last... 24, 48 hours that we reached that. And the current hash rate is obviously 3.6x a hash that we have them at. Future hash rate is supposed to be around 7.5, so they're about 47% installed. Hash rate, average per miner is about 90, 90.6 90 tera hash on that, and it is improving here. So looking at the numbers here that we are tracking, I also added in a new column here to track the BTC hodl from month to month to see if they're selling or who is selling, who's isn't selling who's just you know accumulating more so they obviously sold i have 3351 which were really close to what they had i had them at 6075 but they might have had you know point something here and point something here that they sold to get to the 3352 so about 67 million they said 69 million uh, based on when they sold the price will become might have been higher so this is basically i'm using the end of uh, june price for this sale so that's going to be always off a little bit but they did get, obviously, to 420 BTC mined for the month of June, which is great. And they are mining about 14 BTC per day. May had 31 more days in the month. So had they had the 31 days, they would have been at approximately 434. So about three more Bitcoin mined uh, in that same time frame, I guess you could say. Uh, BTC per petahash was 0.1167, so down a little bit from the month of May, but not too much. It wasn't too bad. And obviously it earned about $8.3, $8.4 million based on that if you're using the end of June price for BTC. So that is obviously a difference of 11 BTC from May, but we know it's just because one day less. And per the quarter, we're looking at about a BTC per petahash on average. So I'm taking the average for the last three months and the last three months hash rate, averaging it out, we're getting about a 0.128 BTC per petahash on average for the last three months. So it's down actually from the first quarter, which was about 0.1305. So a slight decrease in that. And then overall hash rate growth, we obviously had about 292 petahash increase in the last three months, which is pretty good, and about an 8.84% increase. So they are obviously continuing to grow. And we can see here that they've pretty much consistently grew their production of BTC every month. Um, you know, January 301, February had, had only 28 days, so you're going to buy in less. Um, March, obviously, was a big month for them, 363, 405 in April, 431 in May, and then obviously had June had the same amount of days as May, they would have mined more again. So nice, consistent growth. Um, I love seeing that. And let me see if there's anything else. Average hash rate per miner is also growing, so they were at 87.22. 
terahash. In the first three months, in the second uh, three months, they were at 90.69 on average. So that's also good as well. So that's increasing. So that's what we want to see as well. And then here are the miners that we installed basically on what they reported to getting them to the 3.6 exahash. So we installed these 103 terahash miners, about 1,140 of them roughly. And that got us to the 3.6 exahash here. And I do have them for 24 days of mining. And I did have to get them down on the mining days to 28. They might have had some, uh, obviously, mining containment for electricity usage by the local towns and everything else. They might have shut down for a little bit, just so I can get them close to that 8.39 million that I have up here for what they possibly earned. So we're really close to what that's reporting. And we can see it here. Uh, 8.385 and here is 8.393 so really close to that and it looks like they made about 37 and a half million in the second quarter which isn't too bad of a drop from the first quarter so granted they have been growing that obviously helped them obviously take a less of a hit uh, had they not been growing at all they would have taken a much bigger hit here I believe in their total uh, revenue for the quarter and we're looking at approximately right now, if everything stayed the same till the end of the year, they'd be at about 133 million right now. Uh, but obviously, Bitcoin price is down, so that's why we have them currently down to about $10 million uh, for the third quarter, unless obviously miners get installed, hash rate grows, they're gonna be possibly obviously making a little bit more and we'll see where Bitcoin goes. If Bitcoin goes up, we'll be in good shape. And then looking at the Institutions here, really quick, we'll just go into that. Institutions have increased by three from last month. Shares obviously increased as well to 31.7 million. And percentage owned increased to 15.9, almost 16%, which is good. And that's the highest we've seen it here for a while now. So it looks like institutions are getting back into them. They are obviously looking at them as possibly being way, over, uh, way undervalued. Sorry. And we still have the same uh, buy recommendations, so one buy. Price target did change a little bit though, went to 543 from 553 for the high, average, and low. So that is still good. And I have them at, well, right now I'm at PE20. That's obviously not gonna fly. Right now they're trading at, let's see, what are they trading at right now? About a, a one, yeah, about one and a half P of future growth. That's 75% net income from gross revenue. So that's about a dollar thirty-five. I would think once Bitcoin starts going back up, and we don't know when that's going to be, but they could easily, obviously, be going back up to fifteen or so. So at five dollars, they would be at about a PE of eight right now. That the way I'm calculating it, and if we get them to fifteen or so, it would be about ten dollars. So obviously, about a thousand percent increase from where they are right now, which wouldn't be too bad. I'll take that any day. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see what happens with obviously Bitcoin, everything else. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I wanted to show you guys. And I think that's it. We pretty much covered everything that I wanted to cover. HODL obviously is 3,144 BTC, and that's valued about 62 uh, million right now based on the current Bitcoin price of 19,985. And HODL market cap is about 80, 20% of their market cap is HODL position, and each share has 31 cents of Bitcoin HODL basically in it. So. Way undervalued in my opinion, um, like I keep saying, uh, but we'll see where this goes. Once Bitcoin starts uh, rocketing back up, I think the price of bit farms and all the other miners will start going back up as well. I think right now, not financial advice as always, but I've been dollar cost averaging as best I can. I don't know when I'm gonna stop. Hopefully we won't have to wait too long. We still have two years before the halving event. Typically Bitcoin starts pumping back up around the one year mark before the halving, or at least stabilizing at least somewhat going up a little bit. So we'll see if that's the case. So we still have about nine months before we're at that time frame. So in that meantime, I'm gonna dollar cost average in best I can, uh, pick up some more miners possibly, and we'll see where we go. So not financial advice as always, but that's kind of what I'm doing. I've been through this cycle before with Hive back in 2018. So now it's like, okay, I've been through this. I know what's going to happen. I know when to be greedy. The only thing I haven't learned yet is when to be fearful. I got to learn to be fearful when things are getting too high. I should have sold, but lesson learned. You know, maybe we'll get it around the next cycle. All right, so that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, it would mean a lot to me if you guys would subscribe, hit the like button and the notification bell. 
And also the spreadsheet is always available to my Patreon members. Thank you to those guys for their support there as always. Um, and that's it. I hope you guys have a great weekend. Um, happy 4th of July weekend. I'll try to provide, provide you guys with at least one video. I think we'll do the miners versus Bit, uh, Bitcoin comparison for the week tomorrow. And then we may not do anything for the next two days unless something really happens. That's interesting. So that's it. Thank you so much. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.